the way of the cross. The fourteenth station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. As one enters the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the holiest place in all Christendom, the entire panorama of our redemption moment is spread out before him. On the right, up some stairs to an ornate Byzantine chapel, is the place of crucifixion, the small hill of Calvary now completely built over by the church and chapel. At the foot of that hill is a long, flat stone of anointing, where tradition tells us Mary accepted the body of Jesus, and then Joseph and Nicodemus laid him out on the fine linen cloth that covered his whole body, front and back. Then another cloth was wrapped around his head. Myrrh and aloes were wrapped in the burial shroud as a sign of respect. Their intention, as with all Jewish burials at the time, was to keep the body in the tomb, allow it to decompose, and then after a few years collect the bones for a permanent reliquary. That, of course, was not to be in the plan of God. At the extreme left, when you walk in, are a series of chapels in the vicinity of the actual tomb of Christ. It was originally meant for Joseph, but now was dedicated to his master, to his Lord. The tomb is quite small, just enough for a priest and deacon to stand to celebrate Mass, while pilgrims would wait outside. And that is a real privilege, and I can attest that the tomb is indeed empty. It's pretty much just as Mary and Peter and John discovered on the third day. Jesus is not there. He's risen. If Jesus is not risen, we are, as Paul writes, the most pitiable of humans, giving our lives over to someone who is just another dead Jewish rabbi. But he is risen. How do I know that? Ultimately, it's not because it's a great story or my parents raised me to believe in it and in him, the Christ. It's not even because of the stories written in the inspired scriptures. After all, fairy tales are printed in books, too. Our faith rests on the testimony of other human beings, people we call saints, who went to their deaths rather than deny what they knew to be true. Of the eleven apostolic survivors, all but one were murdered for their faith. And they all insisted that they had seen their Lord alive and glorious, and not just a spirit, but a living human in a divinized body. So we are not to be pitied, but to be believed and followed, because being with Christ and in Christ is the only true path to salvation and holiness and eternal happiness. I invite you to join our church or any other church that is celebrating the Easter Triduum, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then of course Sunday at Easter, to commemorate, as we do annually, the Last Supper, the Passion, Death, and Resurrection of Jesus, His placing in the tomb, and finally the Resurrection on Saturday night the great Easter Vigil, where we bring new Christians into communion with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.